Greg, thanks so much for being here with us this morning. I mean, to that point, I, I keep hammering this home, but it's because clearly I am, I am concerned, frankly, about the American worker and the American consumer, which often, of course, are one and the same. They're one so and the same. So when you have yes. stores closed, yeah, when you have stores closed, that's one problem, of course, because consumers can't be buying. But also those workers can't be working. The consumer is really or ha was really the linchpin to this economy for so long when some of the other economic factors perhaps started to weaken. But is the consumer going to be what ends up taking us further into a recession here? Well, the real question will be how fast those workers get back into the stores and into into productive roles, because as you hit on, their employment is directly tied to the consumer confidence factors that drive spending in the U.S. and in other markets globally. And so confidence is a really big deal, of course, for the American consumer. That's why we track it so close, like confidence and sentiment. What will it take to get American consumers feeling better again? I mean, do we have to see these numbers totally gone? I mean, does this virus have to be totally past us before we can truly restart the consumer economy before someone feels maybe OK buying that discretionary sweater? Well, part of it's going to come down to um, how the second part of the story comes out, because on one in one direction, Consumer confidence in the supply chain of retail and the need and the capability to get essential products from production through the supply chain into the stores is actually quite strong because that part of America retail has really withstood the challenge. The, the question about the discretionary spend is going to be when do those dollars start hitting the consumer pocketbook and the stimulus is going to play a big role in that. Hmm. You know, you brought up the supply chain, and I've been thinking about this a lot. We know, based on the data, even though there is growing strength in e-commerce, the majority of sales are still done in physical stores. But if you don't have that option, and e-commerce is your only option, and right now, maybe you're buying more online than you did before, even if it's taking a little longer to get to you. Will that permanently change consumer behavior, meaning are stores going to be in even more trouble because of habits that we're forming now that maybe didn't previously exist for some of us? Well, the key for retailers is to really stop thinking about the consumer through channels because consumers don't think that way. They look for the, the path to purchase that has the, less, the, the least friction. Today, their only option is online. And what that's been able to do is it's allowed retailers to really build the infrastructure to fulfill the consumer need in that channel. Now, when you know, we're able to go back into stores physically, we expect a surge back into the local community where, where consumers are really taking care of their local community stores. And that will bring that e-commerce number back down to a more stable number. But something close to 40% is, is not unlikely going forward. 